virtual local area networks, also well known as VLANs. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look together at what they are, why we use them, and how to create them. Let's jump in. So what exactly is a virtual local area network? Well, I'm glad you asked. To really appreciate a virtual local area network, we probably got to focus on what a local area network is first. So let's say we have a site in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we have another site in Reno, Nevada. In the Las Vegas office, we have computers and networks and printers, and they can all talk to each other. And in Reno, we have another high-speed local area network, and that's high-speed connectivity where devices can talk to each other. We have PCs and printers and servers. They can all talk to each other. If we wanted devices in Las Vegas to be able to communicate with Reno, we could purchase a wide area network connection to connect the two together. So when we talk about local area networks, we have a local area network here in Las Vegas and a local area network here in Reno. High speed connectivity with geographically close devices, a campus, the same building, etc. So what about virtual local area networks? Why do we need it? Well, one day the accounting department grew and they have all these PCs and I'll put them in blue. And the sales department grew and I'll put all their PCs here in purple or pink or whatever color that is. And what they had in mind was they want accounting to be on the network and sales to be on the network, but not on the same network. And somebody said, no problem, we'll just get two switches. So here's an example of a really big switch. It's got uh, about 144 ethernet gigabit ports on it. So we could just plug everybody in, but then accounting and sales wouldn't be separated. They'd be on the same local area network. And how do we separate them? And the answer is da -da -da -da, virtual local area networks. The reason, the way we can make it virtual is this. We can take the accounting folks and we can take, let's say just these ports right here. And they don't even have to be in order. We can take some of those ports and maybe these ports and maybe a few of those ports and assign them all to a specific VLAN. Let's say VLAN six, just because we can, it's just a number. And all those ports, anybody connected into those ports are gonna be like they're on the same local area network. And we'll take sales, we'll use a different color. And for sales, we'll give them these ports, maybe one up here, a few over here. <laughs> we probably wouldn't mix them up that much, but I just wanna give you the idea, they don't have to be ports next to each other, they're just any port you want. Like, a, you know, a sailor, any port in a storm. So any of those ports we'll call VLAN 10. So anytime we had a new salesperson, we want to plug them in. We just plug them in. I'll get a neutral color for the cabling. Let's use red. We just plug them into a port that's assigned to the pink VLAN, VLAN 10, and they're set. The server, we'll put the server up there. That's fine. And the, uh, the accounting devices, plug them into the blue ports and the server into a blue port. And we're set. And that's how, that's why they call it a virtual local area network because we have one physical switch, but we're carving it into different chunks. So virtually, logically, we're keeping all the, account, all the accounting traffic and the sales traffic completely separate from each other. Okay, so we've addressed a couple things. Number one, we've taken a look at what VLANs do is they separate traffic. So you can have some ports in one VLAN and other ports in a different VLAN and yet even other ports in a third VLAN. You can create hundreds of them. Why do we use them? We use them to isolate traffic, isolate groups of devices that like to hang out together for lots of reasons. Security reasons, maybe we have 144 ports on the switch and we just don't want to put everybody in one giant broadcast domain. That's another term for a VLAN. Why would that be? Let's take a look at that for a moment. A broadcast, if you took a look at my other micro nugget on broadcast, a broadcast, if it goes into this frame, into this port right here, that broadcast is forwarded to every other port on the switch. Well, with VLANs, the broadcast that goes in VLAN 2, for example, would only be sent to other active ports that are in VLAN 2. It wouldn't go to everybody, just a subset. So we're reducing the load that everybody's going to have to put on their backs as far as broadcasts are concerned by cutting up our network into smaller VLANs, virtual local area networks. Now, how do we actually create these? It's really simple. It's a couple quick one-liners on a Cisco device. Let me show you how to do that right now. There's two basic steps to creating this. We need to, first of all, identify a VLAN. So let's say for accounting, we're going to use VLAN 5. So we create the VLAN 5, and then we assign specific ports 
on the switch, either in a range or one by one, to that VLAN. So having said that, let's bring in a switch. We'll lift him in here. There he is. This isn't this exact physical switch. This is a 3560 that I'm configuring, but the syntax is identical. So we'll go into configuration mode first of all, and then we'll create the VLAN. I'm going to give it a name. You don't have to. Just the number that's the most important part. And now I'm going to interface configuration, and we're going to assign that port as an access port, meaning we're supporting one device, assigning that port to VLAN 5, then verifying that it actually took. So if we take a look at the output, we have uh, the default VLAN where everybody shows up by default. And then we have the new VLAN 5 that we just created, and it's active, and there's one port, gigabit 0 slash 25 in it. Pretty lonely at the moment because without anybody else, that one port or that one device connected to that port wouldn't be able to talk to anybody because a VLAN of one is a very, very lonely place. So the rest of the story, what else we would need to do is we would carve out our VLANs. We would connect our ports. So we'll take the accounting. We'll Maybe these are all accounting VLAN ports. So the switch controls the VLAN, what, what VLAN ports belong to, which we just did. And we'll put sales in blue. And maybe they're up here to this port and this port and these ports. We'll plug in all the cables there. And the last piece is we need to make sure that these have compatible IP addresses. For example, this could be Elm Street and this could be uh, Douglas Street. Or in more likely terms, this might be the 10.1.0.0 network. And this might be the 10.2.0.0 network. So all the devices would have to also, at layer 3, agree on what the common street name would be. Normally, for every layer 2 VLAN, there's also a common layer 3 IP network. Okay, so the last piece here is, well, what if people in accounting on Elm Street and people in sales on Douglas Street need to talk to each other? How do we pull that one off? And the way we pull that off is with a third device, and that device is a device that knows how to reach both networks and will forward packets, and that is a router. So we could plug a router into a port on, let's say this is VLAN 2, and uh, VLAN 5, and let's say this is VLAN 6. So we could simply plug a router into the, a port on VLAN 5 and a second interface, either physical or logical, into a port on VLAN 6, and then train everybody on Elm Street. Hey, if you need to get out, use the default gateway. Maybe his address is dot one here. And everyone Douglas, use the default gateway of dot one here to get out. Of course, that would be an IP address like 10.2.0.1 or 10.1.0.1 on these interfaces. And then they could route between them. And that, my friends, is the story about what VLANs do, why we use them to isolate traffic, how to create them and assign ports on a Cisco environment, and then finally, making sure you have compatible IP addresses. And if you want to route between those two VLANs and IP subnets, you'd want to go ahead and use a Layer 3 device, commonly called a router. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.